and what they did didn't work. They should have never, never, never put them in another parish. But they did, many of them, time and again. That's the real evil. That's the real evil. Uh, they could be maybe uh, ignorant the first time around. After that, they're culpable, big time. What's happening here today, I think, is just a show. It's just PR. And this child suffered sexual torment uh, like no child ever should, uh, ever. We've learned that two-thirds of the bishops who will be sitting in the conference today have provided safe haven for known sexual offenders in their diocese. This policy will have no value whatsoever if there's not a disciplinary procedure for bishops who have chosen to do that in the past or choose to do that in the future. Uh, until you can di have disciplinary procedures for bishops, uh, children in America, in Catholic churches, are not safe. We did not go far enough to ensure that every child and minor was safe from sexual abuse. Rightfully, the faithful are questioning why we fail to take the necessary steps. The unity for which the Lord prayed fervently for his disciples, I express the most profound apology to each of you who have suffered sexual abuse by a priest or another official of the church. I am deeply and will be forever sorry for the harm you have suffered. We ask your forgiveness. This crime has left deep scars on my soul. Father Jose violated my innocence, ruined my adolescence, and deeply wounded my self-confidence, self-esteem, and sexual response. I have suffered from chronic depression and anxiety since the abuse, depression and anxiety so severe at times that I have contemplated suicide. It is only through the divine mercy of God and the support and love. You see, a child who is abused is put in a frightening and confusing situation. They may have never have heard of anything like this happening. Nobody's told them it's right. Nobody's told them it's wrong. Everybody may like and respect the person who's doing these things. But, but hard. <laughs>